All right. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Daniel Torsello uh, from uh, uh, DSET, PhD student in physics. And first of all, let me thank the organizer for the opportunity of talking here in uh, an environment a bit different from what I'm used uh, uh, probably to many people who uh, don't work on the field. So I tried to cut down the uh, presentation to something um, for a broader audience. And I've been told that there may be uh, master degree students here, so I will try to uh, convince them to start a, a PhD and maybe even in our topics. So mm, what I've been doing in my um, PhD is to study the effects of disorder in iron-based superconductors. To do this, we apply a combined approach, experimental and theoretical. And this is what I'm going to try to explain um, in this talk. First of all, uh, how the uh, experiment works then how do we model the system to get some more information than what just the bare data tells us. And then uh, how the uh, introduction of disorder in these materials uh, changes the properties of the materials themselves. And then in the end, try to convince the students. So uh, let's start from something very, very basic. What is a superconductor and why do I want to study it? Superconductor is a material that below a certain temperature that is usually very low, uh, has a zero resistance. So you can imagine it's something that can be appealing for our applications. Another um, particular property is that below this um, critical temperature, it's also a perfect diamagnet. So it expels the magnetic field out of the sample. And this is used, for example, for levitation. And as I said, it, these properties can be appealing for uh, application in very diverse uh, fields. For example, here we have um, superconducting qubit, so the very base of uh, uh, the future of computing, basically. And here, something uh, on a larger scale, you can use uh, the uh, superconducting material to uh, cast cables and use it for a carrying current. And since you can carry a very high current, you can use it to produce very strong magnetic fields. So this is a magnet for the Large Hadron Collider. So as you can see, uh, there are lots of reasons to study superconductors. And in, particu in particular, if you think that you want to always find new materials with better and better performances, uh, this drives uh, this field uh, to study uh, more peculiar and complicated material with very complex phase <laughs> diagrams, like the one here uh, shown for iron-based superconductors, the system that I'm going to study. And for these systems, um, the existing theories, like VCS theory, uh, for the coupling of electrons to produce Cooper pair that support superconductivity uh, are not sufficient anymore and one needs to go beyond this and so the fundamental study of this material um, is needed to uh, go on with application. So I hope I convinced you that it's worth something uh, working here and um, this is actually the topic of my thesis. Uh, we study iron-based superconductor in this, in particular, I will focus on this system, the 1, 2, 2 family of uh, iron-based superconductors. And we try to characterize their properties using a microwave resonator technique. This was developed by Professor Gianluca Vigo in our group. And um, once we measure some property, we also want to um, get more information from them, trying to relate them to the fundamental properties of the material. So we need the uh, theoretical model that was uh, developed and an expert is uh, Gianni Marino, Professor Gianni Marino, also in our group. So the three quantities that we measure with our uh, setup are the London penetration depth that basically tells you how far a magnetic field can uh, penetrate inside your material. Then the quasi-particle conductivity, uh, conductivity, <laughs> and the surface impedance, real and imaginary part. This is something that you want to know for applications, uh, for example. So. How do we perform the measurement? Of course, we need to go to very low temperature. So we need a cryocooler. We have a completely dry system without liquid helium running around. And we have a network analyzer because we work with uh, microwave frequencies. Um, vacuum system, it can be coupled to an external field using a superconducting magnet. And all this huge setup uh, has only one very small heart that is down here. It's the resonator. We have a superconducting resonator. Um, it's a coplanar waveguide. And what I do is I place a very, very, very small sample, 200 microns by side, um, on the central strip of the uh, central uh, of the coplanar waveguide. So by doing this, I couple it to the resonator and I change the resonant properties of the system, basically. And 
I put it here with a small paintbrush and uh, um, I put it here because when we run an AC current through the system, this produces a um, magnetic field that has only one component in this direction, it's very uniform, uh, very uh, small, and this is the probe for the properties of the material. So what we measure is actually the transmission coefficient of the whole uh, system of the resonator with the uh, sample. And we do it as a function of temperature. So we have many resonant curves, and we get from each one of these the resonant frequency and the quality factor of the resonance. So we get two curves that are the red ones for the uh, resonant frequency and quality factor as a function of temperature for the system that is composed of the resonator itself, that's basically the measurement chamber, and the sample. Then we perform a second measurement without the sample, and we look at the, uh, and we get this curve and this curve, and we look at the relative shifts between these. Why do we do that? Because it has been shown, and I will not go into the detail and bore you, um, it has been shown that these shifts of these two curves are related to how the carriers propagate in our system, in our sample. So from that, we get the London penetration depth, quasi-particle conductivity, and surface impedance after a calibration to get the absolute values. Just trust me on that, or ask me later. And um, these are the three quantities that we basically get out of this measurement for the sample that was put on the central uh, strip. And from this measurement, um, we want to get something more than just the bare information. We want to understand how um, the fundamental mechanism of superconductivity happens in this material. We want to uh, get something out of that. And to do this, we need the um, theoretical modeling tool, basically. To do that, we need some more information. So what, what you need to uh, understand about this material is only one thing. These iron-based uh, iron systems are multiband materials. And uh, when you have a superconductor, you have a parameter, the order parameter, uh, that is different from zero. And uh, it's basically the width of the gap that supports superconductivity. In a multiband material, it can have uh, different values on different bands. And in particular, since it's a complex quantity, you can have a, a sign change uh, between different bands. This is the so-called S plus minus symmetry of the order parameter that has been uh, thought to be characterizing this family. Another possibility would be an S plus plus symmetry where there is no uh, change of sign between different bands. This is one of the things that we want to understand, which one is the correct one uh, for these materials. So again, we need uh, the modeling tool. Uh, it's uh, the solution of the Eliasberg equation very complex one that, among other things, gives you, for example, the London penetration depth. So we want to calculate the same thing we measure, compare them, and try to understand something more about the material. Of course, you have many input parameters here. You can set to zero some of them by uh, looking at what kind of material you're using, and uh, you can make some other assumption, and you reduce this number of parameters to just a few ones that are the coupling, so basically how strongly you can, uh, the electrons interact one with each other to uh, form Cooper pairs. That's a uh, hand-waving argument, but more or less that's it. So you can fix these input parameters to reproduce your uh, uh, experimental data. And that's what you get in the end. We have the symbols that are the experimental data and the solid lines that are uh, the theoretical approach. It's not exactly fit, it's uh, an expectation, let's say, from the theory. Um, for the uh, London penetration depth, three different materials, well, three different dopings of the same class of materials, and uh, the quasi-particle conductivity. We get a very nice agreement between experiment and theory. So, at the beginning I said I want to study the effects of disorder, and we need to introduce this disorder in the material. We do that by performing ion beam irradiation. So basically we have access to three different accelerators, three different beam lines at the Laboratory Nazionale di Legnaro of ENFN. And basically we can choose different energies and different ions to shoot on the material. What we do, we actually um, bombard, uh, um, shoot uh, atoms on the, on the material and produce disorder uh, vacancies and interstitial in the crystal. And that's the disorder we want to study. So we perform the measurement again and again after each irradiation session because we, uh, our measurement system doesn't uh, damage the crystal itself. And we see how the properties change. For example, the critical temperature where, where lambda diverges decreases with in increasing the dose and the low temperature value of the penetration depth increases. And again, we uh, try to interpret this data within the model. 
uh, by we fix the last three parameters by um, reproducing the decrease of critical temperature, and again we get a nice peak. What we get out of the model more than just the measurement is, for example, the information about the values of the gaps uh, on the different bands as a function of temperature and as a function of increasing disorder. And we noticed this is a case for a potassium doped um, material with 250 MeV uh, gold ion irradiation. We noticed that for the highest dose, we, we have a sign changing um, of on one on the, on the of the bands. So we thought, this is still an S plus minus symmetry because we have still a sign change between different bands. But maybe if we radiate more and more, we get the S plus plus symmetry that uh, is another possibility. And so we found out that some theoretical group um, predicted this kind of transition with increasing disorder. So they said, you introduce disorder, this produces scattering of the carriers. And this pushes the gap values to converge to just one. And if you think about, I have a positive gap and a negative one, at some point, if they are converging somewhere, they either go to zero or they, uh, at some point, will have the same sign. And they predicted that this uh, happens with the so-called S plus minus to S plus plus transition and will leave a signature in one uh, property that is measurable and that is related to the London penetration depth. Basically, the low temperature value of the London penetration depth will not be monotonous um, at the transition. We have looked for it uh, by performing 3.5 MeV proton irradiation mm -hmm. on some samples, and we actually found it. Um, by increasing the dose to very, very high uh, values, we have the critical temperature that st first starts decreasing linearly as we expect, and then flattens out. And the low temperature value of the London penetration depth first increases and then drops. And this discontinuity is the one that was predicted by uh, these theoreticians. So again, we want to validate, because this is just a hint, uh, experimental hint, we want to validate this idea and we perform uh, the calculation with our model. We fit the, all these different data, so seven um, measurements with different values of disorder. We, ha we have a good agreement on all of them. And here you can see this is uh, experimental and this is calculated quantities uh, that relate to the London penetration depth. They have the same increase at low temperature uh, with increasing disorder, and they uh, basically look the same. So last information uh, out of it is the values of the gaps. We have fixed all the input parameters, we get this additional information, and basically we see that at some level of disorder that is exactly the same one where we have seen this uh, change of behavior, uh, the small gap changes sign and realizes the so-called S++ symmetry. So by doing this irradiation experiment, we have basically demonstrated that this transition exists and that the pristine material actually had the S plus minus symmetry because otherwise there was no transition possible to the S plus plus state. Okay, so in summary, we have this technique that gives three different uh, quantities as a function of temperature from one measurement, ideal for small samples and non-destructive that we couple to this Eliasberg analysis where we can um, reproduce the same data and get some additional information. We use this to study disorder effects and we were able to identify this transition between different symmetry states that uh, reflect the uh, coupling between um, electrons in this, in this system, basically. And this is what, uh, one of the main results uh, from my PhD and hopefully there is some master students so we'll try to convince them to start a PhD. Um, and I think a good way to uh, do that is by starting from a map. These are the places that I visited or that I'm going to visit in the last few months of my uh, PhD, lots of them. So you can imagine if you start a PhD that you will do something like that. You will spend a lot of time in Torino or wherever you do your PhD in your lab. And I'm sure there will be at least another place where you spend a lot of time, if you're in particular if you're an experimentalist. For me, it was Legnaro where we have the um, accelerator for irradiation. Then if you do a your PhD in a Politecnico, you're required to go abroad for quite some time. For me, it was the United States where I was in the Ames laboratory um, in the group of Professor Prozorov for more than one month. So you will meet lots of people. And of course, you will go to summer school, spring school, winter school, whatever schools to learn a lot. And of course, by learn a lot, I mean also hiking a lot and getting to know people in your field. And then you will go to conferences where we will give presentation and have fruitful discussion with uh, your uh, community uh, of people. 
and of course at the end of each conference there will be a social excursion somewhere beautiful around Europe or the world or Italy or whatever. So I hope I convince some student, if there is any, uh, to start a PhD. And if you're somehow interested into the topics uh, I treated or something related to superconductivity and magnetism, um, I want to just show you that there are many things that um, can be done in our group, both from an experimental point of view and uh, for computation and so on. For example, we have a magneto-optical imaging technique that allows us to see magnetic patterns in samples. So we need people who do the experiment, but also who are good with um, image analysis to handle the images we produce and get uh, all the information out of it. So something for uh, uh, computation, basically. Then we have a study of novel uh, materials where ferromagnetism and superconductivity coexist and have strange interplays, intricate behavior. And a lot of topics that are very close to application. For example, the study of radiation hardness of materials that are then employed in nuclear uh, fusion reaction, uh, reactors. Uh, then the characterization and improvement of performance of superconducting cables for magnets. Um, another topic is magnetic field shielding. You can imagine you have some device and you want, uh, that is sensitive to magnetic fields. You want the magnetic field to be out of it. And you can do it by using uh, superconducting bulks, for example. Uh, another topic is the development of superconducting devices. Here we have a terahertz sensor, for example, that was um, obtained from a, a superconducting thin film and optimized using irradiation. And all these last uh, topics require not only people who will actually do it in the lab, but also some very strong support from, uh, for example, finite elements modeling of high temperature superconductors. So again, also computation is very important in this field. So I hope maybe someone at some point will be interested in it and just write me an email and we will uh, schedule an appointment or something. Thank you. <laughs>